Hey everybody, today is April 16th, Wednesday, April 16th, and the last time we talked, I was going to head to the grocery store, and I did, and then I got home, I unloaded everything, I slept until about 5 p.m. I got up and started working again. And here we are. I'm going to tell you about my little trip to the grocery store today. It was an eye opener. You know, in a short period of time, this virus has spread so terribly. So many people have died. There's news everywhere on this, there's information everywhere on the virus. So, you know, I ended up going to Walmart because they had a lot of things I needed. And, uh, you know, on a budget right now, I get all my cat food there. Um, and then all my cleaning supplies and everything. So Walmart um, is a one-stop shop for me. Anyway, I arrived there. And uh, there was a line. They weren't open yet. They were supposed to open at 7 a.m. I arrived about 5.2. They weren't open yet. And everybody was standing in line. And I would say 98% of the people in line had face masks on. And they were all older people. And then younger people started getting in line. And they had no mask on. No, no type of personal protection at all. Now, I understand if people can't find masks to wear or cannot afford to buy them, but there's everyone's got a bandana, they've got some kind of an old terry cloth towel, they got an old t shirt, something. I just can't understand how they would risk their life going out in public with no protection. Some people say, oh, you're not protected anyway by those masks, this and that. Well, here's my analogy. There is a, there is a retirement community in Ocala called The Villages. And many years back, many of these people, you know, there's a nickname for the place. It's called Sodom and Gomorrah. And many of these people lived there thought because they're old and they can't get pregnant, they didn't have to use contraceptives. But little did they know or educate themselves that having unprotected sex could lead to STDs and HIV. So lo and behold, Tammy, this is for your mom. Um, her mom wanted an elastic strap. Uh, so lo and behold now, and I didn't know about any of this. I had a client that it was a pharmaceutical rep and he told me about this. And then I started researching online and I, I just couldn't believe it. But they had the highest uh, cases of HIV and STD per zip code in the state of Florida. Now, these are people who never did their research. You know, they were living a life of, oh, you know, this and that. And, you know, it is a dominantly Republican community, Christian Republican community. And every time a Republican candidate comes to the state of Florida to promote themselves for a, a position like, like, you know, president or whatever, they always go to the villages. Now, how can those people be that ignorant about catching diseases. Which leads me to today with the virus. What I saw when I when I finally got into Walmart, they were about you know, almost 10 minutes late opening up the doors. When I got in, um, you know, everybody was pretty civil outside. You know, everybody kept their distance six feet away. When I got inside about 15 minutes later, 
I started noticing all these young mothers with their babies in their baskets and neither one of them had any face protection on. Now this was a big concern for me because I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, how could you bring your child out and risk? Maybe you don't have a babysitter, maybe you have no choice, but put something on that child's face, put something on your face. So, long story short, I go to check out and the cashier, she has a double face mask on, she has gloves on, and they have a plexiglass up for her for protection, a barrier, which is great. So I had said to her, I said, what do you think of all these mothers with no face mask on and nothing on their children? She looked up at me and she said, don't even get me started. She said, they are putting their children at risk. She said, there was one mother that her kid wanted something to drink at the water fountain. She goes, yeah, go ahead. She goes to the water fountain and she goes, Walmart had, threw, had turned that water fountain off a week ago. And she said, they don't think. They're not educated. And then I started thinking about all the stories that my friend and my um, family member had told me about working in the hospital. But all these children, all these babies that are born to drug addict mothers. And I couldn't believe how many drug addict mothers are out there giving birth to children, giving birth to these babies. And as soon as the babies come out of the womb, they're going through withdrawal. And when I heard these stories, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. They go, no. Our, the majority of our time with these children in, in the uh, prenatal care or the birth or whatever they call that department is weaning these babies off of the drug. And I said, I just can't believe that a mother would be that unconcerned about her newborn child that she wasn't trying to do something to get off to drugs while she was pregnant. So the first thing that came to my mind when I was shopping and I would seen these young mothers, um, and believe me, they, they, I don't know. I thought, are these like former drug addict mothers? Or what kind of life are they from? Like, why are they not? And they all had cell phones. I saw some of them on their cell phones. So you know they can get the news. You know they can keep up to date with what's going on. But I started to get teary-eyed thinking about these poor kids who, it wasn't their choice to have these women as their mother. And I thought, this is a, this is a vicious circle that's going to happen of these children growing up in a dysfunctional household. And these poor kids don't have a mother that's concerned for them to protect them and then you've got you know I've got these people on my Facebook page are saying it won't protect you it won't protect you it won't do anything yeah it will and that goes back to that story of the STDs with retired people just because you can't get pregnant doesn't mean you can't catch an STD now you're gonna find later on and mark my words on this they're going to come out and say, and many states already, many states already are saying, if you go out in public without any mask on or protection, it's against the law. You will be fined for it. Because medical, the medical industry is saying, you need some type of protection to protect the people around you. If, you're, if you have the virus and you don't know it, you need this mask on anyway to protect you transmitting this disease to someone else. Also, having face protection on will prevent any type of airborne, what we call spit, from landing on your lips or whatever because it's on that mask. And if you have a mask on or any type of protection that has a barrier underneath it, you're going to have better protection than nothing at all. Now. All you have to do is go online and read this stuff. I 
I was so heartbroken watching those children thinking to myself, this is a very dysfunctional family they're growing up in. It, and it, it, just, it just hurts me. It just hurted me. So after I checked out, I'm, I'm you know, wheeling my cart out to go out. And one of those, um, what do they call them, CSMs or something, acting manager in a yellow vest, she's standing on the sign with no mask on. And as my, my buggy is walking, uh, as I'm pushing my buggy, she doesn't do anything to try to get out of the way. And she's standing there with no mask on. And as I go by her, I'm only two feet away from her. And I said to her, because I was so furious at this point, I said, oh, let's back up a little bit before this. So the cashier tells me that Walmart checks everyone's temperature before, they, before they're allowed in and they offer everyone the opportunity to wear a mask. But they're not forcing people to wear masks. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. So Walmart doesn't care about showing their customers how much they're concerned about their customers by making their employees wear masks. And this lady goes, I'm wearing my mask. She goes, I don't wanna catch it. And if I have it, I certainly don't want to give it to somebody else. And I said, thank you for being responsible. And thank you for educating yourself, I told her. And she, you know what she said to me? She said, thank you for wearing your mask. So now as I'm wheeling out, I get by that, via, that CSM, wherever she is, in the yellow vest. I'm so furious at this point. I said to her, I said, where is your mask? And she says, in my pocket. I said, well, that's a good place for it. I said, thanks for showing your concern for your customers. You know, you know what that bitch said to me? You're welcome. I was like, you're an employee. You should be showing your concern for your customers. I was like floored. So then as I'm walking out, they've got these people at the front door that check people's receipts to make sure that nothing was stolen. And they're right up at the front of your car. They're right next to you. None of them had masks on. There's one that watches you, first of all, when you pass by them. Then you get to the second one right by the door. And they have nothing. So I'm talking to a friend of mine. And she shops at Publix. She always goes to Publix. She goes, I got to tell you something. She goes, I went to Publix. And the boy that's bagging my groceries is right next to me with no mask on either. She goes, it's just not Walmart. Well... I wrote about this before and I said I was at Winn-Dixie, I think it was last week, and none of those cashiers, and they were all young, young people, none of them had masks on. So I said to the one that checked me out, I says, where's your mask? He says, they don't provide them for us. I said, they don't provide them for you? I said, are you kidding me? I said, don't you have a bandana or something you could put on? And he just looked at me like, what? Like, all right, dude, just go back to smoking your joint. You're too burnt out to understand what I'm talking about. I'm like, really? And then I'm looking at the manager, this guy that works there. I mean, he's got to go about 400 pounds. No mask on. He would be the first susceptible to catch the virus in his condition and die. He's overweight. He's out of shape. You know, you can see he's not healthy. And I'm like, and he has no mask on. He has nothing on his face. He's not setting a very good example. I... This is the human race. This is, this is humans. You know, a friend of mine said he knew people were stupid, but he said he didn't know how stupid they really were until his virus came around. And you know what? There's no excuse today because everyone has access to being online. You see them online constantly on their cell phones. Everyone has access to education and information. Everyone can see and read. God knows they, how to, they know how to click that buy now button on Amazon. Oh, so then I was on, um, I got tagged one of my, it was Holly, Holly, I think it was Holly. Holly tagged me on this post where this guy who's a real Donald Trump supporter is now bitching about China and he's talking about, he posts this list of all these companies' products that are made in America now. Now he's promoting made in America. And uh, Holly said, better late than never, Christopher. And I'm like, I was preaching about this years ago. I was telling everybody about this stuff years ago. So I wrote a few comments and posted pictures of my 
you know, I've got my Facebook wall. I've got three photo albums full of photos that I took every time I go shopping. Uh, products I find that have been made in America all these years. Better late than never. Then I got another Facebook friend in Canada, and he's like, "We're not. We're, we're only going to purchase made in Canada, made in Canada." And I'm like, "Well." Better late than never to the dinner table, but you're more than welcome to sit at the dinner table now and join us for dinner. Because I haven't preached about this for years. And if you watch my other videos, I was explaining how this, the uh, tax breaks were supposed to be for factories to come back, and they never did. And the reason why they never did is because there is no stipulation for these corporations to receive these tax breaks. They would receive these tax breaks whether they brought fa factories back or not. So now, in the latest news I was reading, the president wants his, his name on the stimulus checks. <laughs> Can we get any more psychopath and, like, narcissist and self-loathing? I mean, seriously? Seriously, people's lives are in jeopardy and this man wants his name on your stimulus check? Oh my god. Freaking. Listen, I'm a brand. I make handbags with my brand label. You won't see my name on these masks. You know, like really. You won't. When you get a mask, I don't have my signature in here. You know? They are on my bags because those bags are, you know, a luxury. But this is a health issue right here. This is helping protect someone. You don't see my name all over it. Not on this mask when you buy it. I, I just don't get that, man. I, I, well, I do get him, but other people think he's, I don't know. I, some of the greatest men in history were such humanitarians. This man, his parents must have told him he wasn't worth anything his whole life. I mean, seriously, if you go psychologically to think about this guy, his parents probably told him he was a worthless piece of shit. His father probably told him he was stupid, didn't know what he was doing. Well, you know, you stop to think about it. His father was kind of right. Um, and I bet you the man never passed his own test in college. He probably paid for his answers. Well, a lot of those corporate guys have... You know, they come, they go to those Ivy, Ivy League colleges because their daddy's got the money to get them in. But none of them are that smart. They're not smart. They just had a daddy that paid for, like those women, those actresses that got their girls into college because they bribed the missions. Do you think that only happened with those women? Do you think some of these politicians and other people have not done that all these years? Because sometimes you say to yourself, here's a person that's supposed to be a, one of the CEOs of a corporation. But it's like... You listen to them and you see what they do, and it's like, there's no freaking brains there. There's no brains there. Just like that banker, that uh, Elizabeth Warren, I don't remember his name, but she had said to him, she goes, how much do you think someone needs to make to be able to make a rent and stuff? Because he was saying people need to cut back. And they pointed out, also another woman pointed out to him, and he couldn't even give answers he couldn't give arithmetic answers, and he's the head of a bank. He had no arithmetic knowledge. He couldn't give any figures. And I'm thinking to myself, ah, daddy bought his, daddy bought his answers in his college, college uh, finals. Wouldn't it be nice if people got promoted for their skill and their knowledge and for being honest? Wouldn't that be nice if people who were in positions actually earned those positions, honestly earned them, not purchased those positions? Imagine how much better our society would be run if people who were actually skilled in high positions in those jobs instead of just getting hired because, you know, you know somebody. You know, it goes back to the story of uh, years ago, my, my first partner, 
um, he lost his job and he was a department store manager for a company kind of like a it was a small it was called Fisher's Big Wheel and he uh, couldn't find any work anywhere well I got downsized from accounting um, at the phone company all the way down to a mailboy so I was delivering mail to our sister company which was the data center the only way you can get a job at the data center is if you had a college degree. So my ex could not find work anywhere. So I said to the manager I knew, I said, listen, my ex has a college degree in business. I says he can't find work anywhere. He's been to Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, can't find nothing. I said, do you have any openings up here? He says, well, I have an opening in the um, mail department, but I can't, I can't give him a job in an upper level. He's going to have to work his way up like everybody else does but I can get him a job if he's qualified for the mail department so I have him put his application in and he says because we do have opening I said okay so I went home and I says go put your application in for mail boy I'm not gonna be no mail boy I've got a business degree and I'm like you know what this is the 80s this is the recession you're lucky to get anything right now and you can work your way up so he went up there Put his application in and back then what you had to do is you had to call every week and say I want to update my application and this is long before being online and uh, they would pull your application out put the date on it when you called to update it which meant they saw that you were still looking for a job so after a couple weeks of him you know moaning and groaning realizing he still couldn't find nothing on his own he uh, finally uh, called them and to update his application and a few days later human resources called him for an interview and uh, the lady who interviewed him came from a background in in retail also so she knew the skills he had and stuff so he got hired long story short years later after we broke up and we moved to, well we moved to Florida we broke up and everything and he's working now as a they, they give these fancy titles of VP, Vice President of a Department, and all they are is really a manager. Um, and after we broke up many years later, I had to call him. I said, you know, I've got all these photos of your family, and I want to know if you want them or not. And uh, so we started talking, and I was tell telling him about, you know, my website and this and he goes oh you have a website for your work I said yeah he goes what is it so I gave it to him and he looked at it and he goes who put that together for you I said I did he goes gosh I wouldn't even know where to start to do that now I said to him I said hold on you're a manager of an IT company and you wouldn't even know how to put a website together on a menu driven site that does not require a web degree I'm like really man I said you're in the wrong job <laughs> I said I don't know who you I don't know who you screwed around with to get your job I said but seriously I should have your job and that kind of floored me when I when I listened to him about that I was like damn so be proud that you know how to do things today because as an example, there are people and leaders in positions that don't know how to do shit. And they only got the job because they knew somebody. They worked their way up because they became friends with somebody. Not because they had skills. And sadly, it's been like that for years. Just like the college admissions. People graduate from college because they had money to buy the answers for their finals. You know? Um, so that's been going around for decades it's um, the world that we live in today is changing com completely we will never go back to the way we were you know I'm a hugger I love to hug people my clients and I hug each other I have a great relationship with my long-term clients um, we hug each other you know, we're very genuine, emotional. It's going to be hard not being able to hug my, my clients and my personal friends. 
it's going to be very difficult. We're all going to become zombies, ice cold zombies from this. And it's sad because there's so many of us that are very emotional, we're very touchy, you know. Now we just have to wave to each other. I know when I go back to doing hair, I'm going to wear a mask full time. And I got to find a way for the clients to wear some type of facial protection while they have hair color on. You know? Isn't it pretty? Tammy, this is yours. Um, yeah, so, all right, I'm done. That's my story for today, part of my life I shared with you, my legacy, whatever. Love you guys. Take care. I'll talk to you next time.